Gravity has just opened up the second week of LCS by defeating Dignitas. Now bring their win count up to two after the victory on Sunday of last week. I'm now joined by Keen, and what I have just discovered is his first ever interview, the world-exclusive interview with Keen right now. Uh, Keen, a, a lot of people don't know your backstory, so I thought maybe that would be a, a good way to go with this. So first off, people know that you're Korean, but you, you're also from New Zealand. So anyway, how does this all work? Like, what has your life been like? So I, I can go first. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I was born in Korea, and then when I was 10, I went to New Zealand to study with family. And then like eight years later, when I was like 18, I just went to Korea again to do some work. And then I just play league here, there, to for fun and okay. friends. So what uh, around what time did you start playing league? Like season one, season two? Um, from season two, I think from April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how did you end up becoming a pro player? From starting to do this, uh, just playing league is for fun or whatever. How did you end up uh, playing competitively? So during season three, I was like keep playing, and I was like top 15 in Korea later, so I got offered by a coach called Ung, who was an MIG coach. Then I played mid lane for that team. It, that's what I started for. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then did you keep playing in, in Korea? I mean, how did you, because I know that whenever you moved to America, it was from New Zealand. So what happened after Korea? So after like three months, the team got disbanded. And then I went to I went back to New Zealand to study, and then I played league there again with friends. Okay. And did you play competitively down there at all? Um, when I was playing with my friends, I got offered a place to play mid for Australian team, mm -hmm. and that team got sponsored by Curse, which is from Liquid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve Liquid, the owner. Now, now known as Team Liquid, and so you played with them, and then I think, so did that team get disbanded? How did you end up in California? So, we were, we were playing on that team for like five months, mm -hmm. and then I got offered play, to play for sub workers, and then, yeah, I just, I just wanted to go to America to play more games. Since the ping in New Zealand was really bad, yeah. it was really high, so yeah. And then I went to America. Yeah. And then eventually ended up on Curse Academy, which now you, you guys got in, now you're on Gravity. So do you think, this is in some ways like the, your first opportunity at competing in a big league, right? You hadn't really competed in anything too large, and so now you're in the LCS. Uh, is this something that you feel like you've been working towards for a long time or something you're really excited about? I mean, what's your thoughts on, on joining the LCS. Yeah, I really didn't want to lose the chance to go to America and play competitively. So I just worked really hard, played for a long time. That's it. So if we're assuming that this is the start of your real professional career, kind of, uh, do you think that there's a time in the future where you would want to go back to Korea and compete in uh, LCK or, or OGN, whatever you want to call it? Maybe. Uh, I really don't know. Yeah. Maybe after like one year, I don't know. There's this this sense I think from everybody that's like Koreans are just so much better at League of Legends, you know, and and especially in North America. And we saw all these LCS teams draft uh, Korean players during the off season. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that uh, are you one of these Korean players that are just way better than the rest of us, or what? What's your your sort of stance on all these Koreans joining the LCS? I think. Koreans are just better because they play more games than Western people. Because yeah. like in Korea, they play just like six, more than sixteen hours a day. And then for like NA teams, like they play only like eight hours, yeah. I guess. And yeah. There's probably a, a decent amount of fans out there that have this idea that all the Korean players in the LCS now all sort of like talk to each other or like you, you go and talk to Piglet or Loco Duck or anything like that. Are you close to any of the Korean players here in the LCS? Have you spoken with them? Like what, what's your relationship? Um, I think I'm close to Piglet and Phoenix because I really helped them a lot, like translating oh, something yeah. and going out with food and yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then for 
well, there's this kind of this funny theory. You know, Crepo, the support player? Uh, Crepo made this theory when I was in Korea where he said he thinks that all these Koreans are going to join all these different teams in North America. And then in about one or two years when they all become like NA players, they're all going to join one Korean team and have the Korean super team. Keen, is this part of the plan? Like, have you are you in on this? Or are you going to join a, a Korean super team with these guys? Maybe. <laughs> All right. All right. Very good. Anyway, other than that, Keen, is there anything you want to say to all your fans out there? Because I think more and more you're proving yourself to be a very uh, high skilled player here in the LCS. Um, thanks for all the fans. If there are any fans for me. I'm sure there are. And I'm sure that if you are a fan of Keen, you can you can tweet at him. You have Twitter, right, Keen? Yeah. OK. You can tweet at him. Tell him you're a fan and that you're happy to see him play in the LCS. Thank you so much, Keen, for the interview, you did fantastic. As always, I did terribly. You can check out the rest of our coverage of all things LCS at OnGamers.com.